got ZA003 right behind me. The 787 uh, arrived here at Farnborough this morning. Right now there's a press conference going on uh, with the leaders of the Boeing company talking about the arrival of uh, the airplane for the very first time on international soil. We've seen here an extraordinary media turnout for the event and really just a, a moment for, for Boeing after uh, two and a half years of, of uh, struggling to get the 787 ready to, ready to go, ready for service. This is a, a big moment for Boeing to really show the 787 to the world. So now we're gonna take you inside the airplane and really take you, you know, nose to tail, all the design features that, uh, that are right in front of us here at Farnborough on display of the Boeing 787. We're at the nose of ZA-003 here, and when the 787 was first conceived, it had a very, very different nose. When it was known as the 7E7, it had what was really its most defining feature along with the shark tail that, they, uh, that Boeing had come up with. So really we see a more conventional nose probably ultimately more aerodynamically efficient than the one that Boeing first designed. You also got the uh, a four cockpit window, which is actually the first uh, flight deck windows that Boeing has uh, designed since the uh, Boeing 767. The 767 and the 777 share a common uh, flight deck window structure. So you really see uh, really a, a big leap forward in how Boeing uh, uses the flight deck to really give pilots the best access looking outside. And actually the largest single piece of unsupported structure on the aircraft are those two forward windows. So really it is a, a definitely a, a one of the 787's most iconic features in comparison to the other Boeing airplanes. We're here in front of the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engine that powers the Boeing 787. This engine is rated at 70,000 pounds of thrust. We actually just checked the aircraft's FMS to see what the rating is for the flight test program that's going on right now. Uh, right here, we, what's interesting about the, the 787s they sell is actually uh, right underneath here is actually a laminar flow design. It, uh, it, it speeds up the air uh, in a, a smoother fashion over the, uh, over the nacelle lip uh, to really uh, improve the fuel burn of the aircraft. We're here at the back end of ZA-003. It's a bit noisy because the aircraft is hooked up to uh, external power, keeping all the systems running right now on board. If you look at the very tail of ZA-003, you'll notice right by the elevators there's a slight curve in right at the very back. It's actually a bit of a, an aerodynamic uh, tribute to the original 77 design with its shark tail. So you really see kind of what's left over from that original concept for uh, the aircraft's tail. Right behind that is you see the tail cone which is built in, in South Korea and shipped to final assembly holds the aircraft's auxiliary power unit which is built by Hamilton Sunstrand. That's really one of the main cores of the aircraft's more electronic architecture providing starter power for the aircraft's twin engines. So really, this part of the aircraft really gets the airplane going when it's, when it's at the gate or when it's, when it's starting up. So right here, you've got the, the tail which is built in Seattle, the horizontal stabilizer built in Italy, and really, you get, really get a sense for the international nature of this airplane and the diverse array of suppliers that are participating on the program. Welcome to England. Thank you. How was the flight over? It was fantastic. Uh, we've, we've had flights that were this long before, but this was uh, the first time we've gone international, the first time we haven't ended up back at uh, Boeing Field on a flight of this length, and it was great. Excellent. And can you tell me a little bit about your route coming over? Uh, yeah, it was actually, it's the direct route, basically, or a great circle route. So we flew north out of uh, Seattle, up over Canada, over Hudson's Bay, Greenland, and then down across uh, Ireland and into the UK. It was a pretty straight shot. Can you tell me about the test points that you accomplished on the flight over? Uh, yeah, the, most of the testing was um, testing that wouldn't interfere with our flight path, so we weren't doing any maneuvering or anything of that sort. Um, primarily testing communications functions, especially uh, things at high latitude. As we go across the North Atlantic, we can't speak VHF to air traffic control. Um, so we're working with the satellite system, with the HF system, and uh, the data linking system. Terrific. Well, Tom, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. We're heading on to ZA-003 now. Come on board with us. Well, here's where the flight test crews slept just last night. It's a little weird. It's like walking to someone, someone's hotel room after they've been in it. This is the crew rest area for ZA-003 in the front uh, forward crown of the Section 41. You see we have a spot for, for uh, two crew members up here and a, and a third spot over here. Uh, which actually is a uh, bit of a recliner there to sit, read, relax, uh, catch up on anything. But really, this is uh, where crews will sleep 
uh, during uh, long endurance flights uh, all over the world. So this is, again, the upper crew rest of uh, 787 Dreamliner. We're in the forward cabin of ZA-003. There are two cabins, one in the front, one in the rear, and flight test instrumentation in the middle. But we're really uh, right here in the front, which was not long ago, home to uh, flight test personnel who are riding the airplane over for the very first time to, uh, to Farnborough. What we have here is actually the, one of the very, 787's very special features, which is the uh, electrochromatic dimmable windows. And we're just going to kind of show you exactly uh, how they work. There's a little button at the, on the bottom of every, every window. Just press it a couple times to get it to, to dim, and we'll uh, take you through that, that process right now. Quite literally, this is ZA-003's business class. This is where all the work gets done on, on the 787 for flight test. All the racks of instrumentation for this aircraft are right here, sandwiched between two classes of economy seating. Uh, we've got racks monitoring different aircraft systems. This aircraft in particular is used to uh, test and demonstrate and validate the aircraft's onboard environmental system. So testing the, the uh, flow of air throughout the cabin, how it keeps it warm, how it keeps it cool, and ultimately getting uh, from you to place to place comfortably uh, as uh, you fly all over the planet. So again, this is the center of the 787. This is the back end of ZA-003. It is the uh, crew rest area, so that for the, the cabin crew that will serve the approximately 225 to 250 passengers that will be on board, uh, they will take uh, their rest back here during long flights. There's room for one, two, three, four, five, six uh, spots in the, uh, in the back end of the airplane. It is uh, just in the, in the crown of the upper uh, 40, uh, seven section in the back of the airplane. Uh, there's the galley directly behind us and uh, the aft cabin of the flight test aircraft directly in front of us. So again, this is where uh, the flight test, uh, the, the flight test crews uh, nap during flights, but, but when the plane enters service, where the cabin crews will take their rest. On board here is ZA-003, the, the front end of, of the Boeing's third flight test aircraft. And we're here with uh, 787 Chief Test Pilot Mike Character. Mike's going to kind of take us through uh, what uh, he, he does on this side of, of the 787 and uh, the features of his uh, front office. So remember, remember the primary design goal of this airplane was to match the 777 for a training and handling quality standpoint. So our flight control system matches the way the 777 flies, and we've already demonstrated that. We already have passed that part of our certification process. Uh, the other part of it is to uh, have like memory items. And so if you're a 777 pilot and you want to turn the lights on, you can just put your hand up here and you're going to get the same switches in the same position. So the, the electrical panel's in the same place, the hydraulic panel, the fuel panel, the air conditioning panel, they're, they're all almost identically the same, except for where we change the systems underneath. So like the air conditioning packs, they just have an on-off switch, whereas in a air-driven system, they have lots of valves and controls of it. Uh, the mode control panel, although it's made by a different vendor, uh, the, 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 it's identical to the flight crew. The electronic checklist function is uh, identical to the, uh, the flight crew. So things like the pre-flight checklist, they're identical. They're same words, same techniques, same number of clicks, our electronic checklist. Uh, we have lot, much larger displays, which allows us to have a um, very large map in the upfront position. Plus, it gives us up to a 1,280 nautical mile range, which is really nice in this when we can have such direct flights. Uh, it has HUDs. That's, that's brand new for the airplane. Uh, the throttles, the flaps, the speed brake handle, they're all it's almost right the same thing. And then what we did do was instead of having seven or eight different line replaceable units, we put a lot of things into a, a, a master tuning control panel. Mike, thanks for taking us through uh, front end of uh, ZA-003. You're very, very welcome. Well, that was Boeing's third flight test aircraft, ZA-003. Thanks for coming along, nose to tail, of Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Soon this airplane will be in service with all Nippon Airways, hopefully by the end of the year. So we'll definitely have more for you then. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the rest of the Farmer Air Show.